Welcome everyone. Today we'll be painting a Samusaran 3D model designed by Kimet88. Let's just jump right in. Alrighty, up first we have the torso. Uh, now I had this printed at a third party. So I'm just sort of quickly showing off. Well, their work really. Um, they did sort of cut it in a weird spot. I'll get into that a bit later. Uh, then on to the base. Again, just sort of showing it all off. Uh, it's a very highly detailed model. Uh, it is running at one quarter scale. Uh, although there you can see sort of the edge of their build area which they had to cut. Uh, legs, left and right, obviously. Uh, but yeah, so it's one quarter scale. Uh, decent size of the end. Probably just under... About 45 centimeters. Um, now I'm just showing off uh, the alignment. So right leg aligned very nicely. Uh, clean join. The left leg though, you can sort of see a bit of a gap. So I'll get into it in a little bit. But uh, you can sort of see as you line it up on the base, the legs don't exactly... Yep, I meant to do that. Um, the legs don't exactly line up where they should do. You can see uh, the feet holds there and not fixing properly um and then you can sort of see where it should have sat uh and yeah i've uh i had to go <laughs> out of my way because i was going to try this out first before doing anything but i went out and got my own 3d printer uh and this is probably attempt number oh i reckon we're close to about 12, 13, 20, uh, trial by fire, I guess, is the best way to describe it, because, uh, it was not easy. Uh, well, it's probably easy if you, well, it's easy now that I know what to do, but at the time, geez, that was terrible. Alright, so I've had to replace the torso. Uh, the main reason being, I had this printed from a third party. And they cut the model to fit on their 3D printer. They cut it there and along there. Problem being with that was that when we lined it up with the base, the legs ended up being in that sort of a position. When I try to line it up, it either lines up with a gigantic 10 millimeter gap. So when the second one was printed, Again, couldn't get it in one piece, however it was cut through the center. So the leg pieces formed one join, so that when it's all tied together now, it lines up correctly. Alrighty, with that explanation over, we're back to uh, just sort of Aligning all the parts. Now you see there's a small gap in the arm there. That's just uh, from the printing process. I will uh, remove the little sort of... What do you call it? The sprues, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Um, just to sort of stop them from pushing out. And also give it a, a light sound to make it smooth. So it aligns a bit better. Uh, I've cut out a lot of it. Uh, it was probably a good thing. Three to four months of sanding because I cannot do it in one stint. So I did it slowly over many weeks. Um, now with all that done, I'm going to move on to putting magnets and everything. Now, I it's nice being able to remove it all uh, rather than just having it as a uh, sort of gluing it all together, making it rigid. It also makes painting a bit easier as well in the long run. Now, here I am putting a dot of just black paint on the uh, on the shoes so that when I line it up with the base the paint's obviously still wet here uh, but it will transfer correctly to the uh, well I know where the base and feet line up so what I can do with a little uh, with a little Dremel part there I did put tape on the uh, on the drill bit there I do not know why uh, I didn't have to stop at a certain depth. I could have just gone all the way through. And if it is too deep, it's not too bad. Uh, I do have the Dremel on a low speed. 
Uh, if I was going faster, I would recommend not having your hands that close. But I've just put a, uh, a three mil hole into the, well, into the base of Samus' feet there, and also into the base. Drop of super glue, uh, followed by putting the magnets in. Uh, pretty much, just get it in close enough, and then push it down on on a base. Just make sure there's only one magnet, otherwise you'll push them in. Uh, and it is always, I usually like keeping them on the stack, that way you can identify which orientation the magnets are in. So, I tried different ways, sometimes it was just easier using the X-Acto blade to sort of help align it, so, well, got it on there, and my hands didn't end up covered in super glue, because that was always a, uh, always a fun time. But you can see there, uh, the magnets are flush to the base. Uh... Hindsight probably should have used bigger magnets. Uh, they did their job, especially on the one on the ray section there. Uh, it really needed more force to hold it down. It does all right, but as it's settled over time, it sort of does lean a little bit. But you can see in the uh, the leg parts, uh, I've used rather than a three mil magnet. I think they're a six or eight mil, uh, which helps hold them a lot better. As I said. Bigger magnets, a lot more, a lot uh, stronger. Moving on to priming. Now I used uh, Vallejo Grey Spray Primer. Uh, there is black and white ones. I feel the greys are just a better muted color. Uh, it helps sort of, well, it helps with the light, the darks and the lights. Whereas if you go solid black, it's good for the darks, but not so much the lights. And whites sort of the eh. whites are better in that regard because darks cover it up a bit, bit better. But you can see. All, uh, all very smooth. Uh, the sort of indent parts are where the magnets are, but they're going to be obviously inside, so you won't be seeing any of that. Uh, I just realised I didn't show off Samus's arms in the uh, initial sort of show off, so there you got that. Uh, I also had to replace Samus's hair. Now on to the colouring. Uh, now I'm just using a metallic grey here. Uh, once that was sprayed coloured or sprayed in the single color i'm now moving on to some whites hopefully getting a sort of glowing section on the front i sort of pull it off uh not as good as i was hoping but i need a lot more practice um just painting different lights on the color on the uh, buttons there different colors on the buttons uh taping off this front area so i've got white in the bottom there because i want to make it look like it's hot so White on the bottom, and then spraying it sort of shades of yellow, orange, red. Uh, starting off with the white, moving on to the yellows, sort of getting darker and darker and trying to keep it sort of... The hotter it is, the whiter it is, essentially. So you'll see here as I peel it all off, it came up alright. Uh, could have been better. Uh, but ultimately can't complain too much about the, uh, about the results. Now, I'm also wanting to make the base look, well, like a Metroid world, so not everything's brand new and sparkling clean, so uh, doing a bit of a base sort of rust painting here, so around the pipes, and then just going to dry brush over the top. I may have gone slightly overboard with the rusting, but uh, I think in the end it turned out alright. Uh... There is one section at the end I could sort of argue that I've gone a bit overkill with, but we'll get up to that when we get up to that. So this section I decided rather than hot, it would just be sort of water had accumulated there and sort of moss and mildew and mold had sort of grown in there. So went with the green colour. And you can see there's sort of the, the glowing radiator effect. So after all the painting, uh, sort of this is the point we're up to. Well, after all the rusting, this is the point we're up to now. I'm sort of now going a bit more with the rusting, so I've just got a sponge with some of the uh, orange paint on there. And as you can see, I've uh, gone over the entire thing with that sponge to sort of highlight some areas. Some sort of edges are a bit more rusted than others. Um, now moving on to the air legs, arms and torso. I tried putting shadowing on first, but the paint that I used was good enough that it completely and utterly covered the undercoats. So the pre-shadowing completely pointless but I sort of I thought I'd showed what I was trying to do but uh had no effect in the end so um now the blue that I'm using is a Vallejo sky blue 
and uh, I went and got a airbrush. I went and got an airbrush for for it just because I uh, I think the finish you get with the airbrush is a lot more uh, a lot cleaner than what you get with uh, an actual paintbrush, especially for the uh, bigger models because uh, any little defect shows up. Well, it's a lot more obvious because you're looking at it sort of in a bit more detail. Now I'll move on to shadowing properly this time. Uh, I'm using, uh, I believe it was an Ale Vallejo Electric Blue. Um, you, I've got a bit overboard on that one, so uh, we'll come back to that in a second. Uh, but pretty much you just want a light coat and sort of elbows, arms, back of the knees, where shadows would normally sit. So under the shoes there. Um, can't use any sort of... Well, you got to choose a darker color. You can't choose a gray because it'll just be gray then. Especially with the uh, proper paints. Pretty much just again with the airbrush, just a light coat. Uh, taking the time to layer up. Uh, if I did go overboard, then I'd just go back to the sky blue and just go over the top to uh, repaint it and then sort of go again. I would usually as well go over between... Once I was happy with the finish and coat, uh, with a clear varnish, I had a Vallejo, a Vallejo gloss varnish, and that just sort of sealed the layers when I was happy with them, so I uh, less likely chance of getting damaged between coats. Um, yeah, so the advantage with the airbrush as well is you can sort of do a run the well. If you're good with a brush, you can do it. I can go with dark, and if it's too dark, then I can go over the top again with the uh, sky blue to sort of soften it a bit more and sort of blend it in a bit. So that's what I'm doing here. I've gone and done the shadowing, uh, and then going back over with the sky blue just to sort of blend in it a bit so it wasn't as uh, a sharp of a line. Uh, from here, after my varnish coat, I can now sort of tape it off without worrying that I'm going to start peeling off the blue once I've removed the tape. Just sort of showing off sort of the taping job. Everything's covered. I used a, sort of the really thin 2-3mm tape and then just sort of the standard painter's tape for the uh, just sort of the mass, mass covering area. So this is to get in the next color, which is the sort of darker blue. For that I use the Tamiya TS19 metallic blue spray paint. And you can see here just... Uh, the spray can definitely makes it a lot easier not trying to get the airbrush pressures all correct and it just comes out in a really consistent, nice coat. So that goes on fairly quickly and easily. And I'm just covering pretty much any exposed part there. So even inside where the leg goes, that way it, uh, it'll cover it all nicely. So this is always the fun part, taking the tape off, although slightly nerve-wracking because even with the varnish layer, um, there is a slim chance that the paint peels off. Uh, whether it's, yeah, like that. Um, that was a prime coat, uh, and I'm sure a lot of you have been say, why am I, you know, touching it with my bare hands because I'm getting oils on it? Um, yes, that's probably the reason why the, uh, priming coat peeled off slightly when I, uh, took the tape off. Thankfully, I didn't have that issue on the rest of the body, on the legs, on the arms, so... I should probably either A, wash my hands more frequently to stop the oils from getting on, or B, wear actual gloves. Um, I make no promises on that, though. So after the legs, I've uh, been painted and cleared off. Because I'm more after not a clean, polished look for the shoes, I was happy to paint them on with a paintbrush. Um, this is just a... I think this is also a Vallejo uh, gunmetal grey. Uh, so just painting in the majority of it, and then using, again, the sort of 3 mil tape, along with some masking. That's what the green stuff is. It's sort of a Vallejo masking liquid, I think, or it might be a green stuff world masking liquid. But that way I can just sort of get in without worrying about uh, getting any paint onto the finished sort of blue section. So with both legs being done, I then went with a lighter metallic silver on the top. For the sort of the plate, the plate armor sort of look, uh, wasn't too worried about getting it on the sides of uh, the little plates because again, it's getting down to the very minor details. Um, it did require several coats because obviously it's a lighter color on a darker color. Um, 
that section at the back is white because Samus's heels have a slight yellow glow. So just trying to make the uh, yellow pop a bit more. So I'm just painting the uh, weather yellow uh, fluorescent paints going a uh, white color first as a sort of its primer. Um, I am going for a glow effect. Um, thus the reason why I'm using an airbrush without covering anything else up. That part is where I've probably gone a bit overkill. Uh, it's probably got a bit too much bloom. Uh, you'll see it in a second on the base where I'm sort of marking out the edges of where the sort of light sources on Samus's uh, shoes are. And again, just painting onto the base white to sort of make the fluorescent colors pop a bit more. Just, yeah. Spraying everything white. This is where I went probably a bit overkill for the effect. Uh, you can sort of see I've got white on the pipe there to make it sort of look glowing. And now I'm uh, just, yeah, going a bit overboard. Personally, in hindsight, uh, probably should have toned it down a bit. I do like the effect. I just think I did a bit too much of it. As you can see, about a third to half the base is now glowing yellow. So, I'm happy with the work that I did, but could have been a bit cleaner. Uh, again, the fun section, taking all the tape off to uh, line up. Line up. To uh, have a look. Um, it came up well on the shoes. I don't think the shoes are too blooming, glowing. I think they got the right amount. It's the base that I think I've been a bit overkill with. And then I'm just doing a uh, another... So this is a matte varnish, because again, you don't really... Uh, yeah, more of a matte finish on the base rather than a gloss finish. And then here I am just filling up the sections underneath the pipes with a green UV set resin. Just to sort of, again, give it the look of the pipe and the base is sort of very old and... They're leaking now. One advantage with the UV resin, uh, you can sort of put, well, you can put it on to things and let it start dripping and then cure it. So that way it will give you still that dripping effect. So that's just on the front there. And the yes there as well, I didn't show, but I also filled that up with the uh, resin as well to get the sort of a cool effect of it to the, uh, to the front. Here I'm using Tamiya TS19 Metallic Blue Spray. Uh, I feel it just matched Samus's Zero Suits colors pretty much perfectly and then didn't have to worry about it. As good as the airbrush is, uh, the sprays are just... Everything will come out perfectly nearly all the time. Uh, obviously, trick being just don't sort of start, stop. Just start spraying, spray over your unit, and then once you pass it, then stop spraying. Usual uh, sort of spray paint uh, techniques. It's always fun removing all of the... Uh, all the tape off of off the figures, see how they come up. Although you can see at the top there, just a bit of a bit of a blue spot left over, which was unfortunate. But again, touch it up, not too bad. Now here's the start of the next process. I'm just wanting to get the white down so that when I put the uh, sort of fluorescent pink on, they will uh, pop a bit more. Um, I'm also this is another thing where I'm like, eh, I don't know if I went a bit too far, but obviously putting more white down to get sort of that bloom effect going when I would start doing the uh, the pink effects. So just touching up, well, doing the base run just in of the brush of the, uh, the fluorescent pink just to get it started. Hitting all the highlights there. And then once that's all done, moving on to the airbrush to sort of Fill in the gaps, and also I don't need to worry about doing sort of a second or third coat of the airbrush, seeing as there's that sort of thick hand brush base coat underneath it all. That's probably where I should have ended, but I... It's not too bad how it came out. Uh, probably a bit too much on the bloom effect, but it's probably the less egregious ones of the lot of them. Alright, moving on to the arms. Uh, probably the... Well, there's nothing really new here, it's just going to be the same sort of... Uh, same techniques as what the legs and torso had. Uh, just spraying the uh, metallic blue on again. Sort of covering up any of the... Anything that I want light blue is covered up. 
Uh, obviously, the gap where the arms meet the torso, sort of spraying in there as well. That way, uh, less likely chance of seeing any sort of light blue see leaking through. Leaking through, yeah. Now, just uh, removing obviously the tape off of off of everything. Uh, this pretty much got the base colours down. Uh, there was quite a substantial amount of like paint leaking from sort of around uh, Samus's wristband there. Uh, I wasn't too concerned about that. There's a bit of a paint leaking as well onto the upper section of the arm. Uh, again, though, just due to the fact that it's just solid base colours at the moment, with maybe a bit of a uh, bit of shadowing here and there, it's not too bad to fix up. Uh, this was the other reason as well. I wasn't too concerned. I'm painting a dark metallic sort of gunmetal grey over a lot of it, so. Any blue that did manage to get onto the, those sort of smaller parts just got instantly covered up. Uh, thankfully, the thankfully the paint has a high uh, high amount of pigment in it, so it does a pretty good job of covering pretty much everything up. As sort of earlier on realized, when uh, any, all the shadowing that underneath on the base coat just instantly vanished when you put the uh, first color coat on. Alrighty, so just doing a bit of, again, the white and the pink onto the gun here. Just sort of get it to highlight and match the original colours. Uh, skipped over the handle, but that was sort of more finicky and trying to get all the paint underneath without getting any to touch on it in the uh, Thomas's hand itself. And then again, the other arm, same concept, or same, exact same way of doing it, except for the fact that uh don't need to worry about the gun on the, uh, on the left hand. So, again, go around with the white. We'll be doing the highlighting sort of bloom effect. Again, may have gone a bit overboard with all of it. Uh, I don't know if some of these are officially lights or if they're just more just painted on to the zero suit. But I have seen a few of the uh, concept arts where it's all meant to be sort of glowing. So that's what I went with. So just spraying on more of the uh, more of the white to get the white to sort of cover what I needed to. And now moving on to obviously. The fluorescent colours. So, fluorescent pink came up alright. Not too overboard. So, just spraying on the uh, fluorescent yellow. Uh, I believe the fluorescent yellow and pink were both from Green Stuff World. Their fluorescent paints. The yellows were probably the ones I spent... Put a bit too much paint on for. Uh, but... I don't think they ended up looking too bad. You can see the sort of finished gun with all, all the fluorescent sort of glow on the uh, pink end of the gun as well. As you can see, the pinks I feel alright, but yeah, the yellows, the yellows are a bit too much. Now moving on to Samus's head. Uh, unfortunately, I missed it, but I had already painted Samus's eyes on, so that was just a basic, uh, basic white, and then just sort of using a paint, small paintbrush to get the uh, eyes looking the same direction. And then obviously the irises and then the highlights of the white. Just painting on the uh, base coat of Samus's skin tone there. That one I had to uh, I had to lighten up the Green Stuff World Elven Flesh paint color. It was a bit too on the it was a bit too on the pink side for Samus's skin tone. Had to make it a bit whiter in the end. Uh, now just putting on the green liquid green mask onto Samus's eyes so I don't get paint on there. Seeing as I pretty much finished those, which was uh, I don't think it matters too much when you do the eyes, but I just did those at the first for some reason, so here we are. So, just uh, using a toothpick to sort of get a liquid mask into every sort of corner of the eye, so there's no exposed section, before moving on to the airbrush. So just, I mean, as I said, uh, it's the paintbrush, if you're pretty good with it, is decent, but I'm not that great, so the airbrush sort of gives it a really good, nice, even coating. Uh, and then starting to airbrush the hair, I was being a bit lazy, so I wasn't taping it over, so I was just sort of uh, airbrushing up the top without getting too close to the skin that was just painted. And this was sort of back and forth between several different coats, so a bit more of the skin tone, a bit more of the hair. Uh, you can see the advantage as well with the liquid mask, it sort of maps Samus's eyes, they're completely covered in paint now, but uh, I can just peel it off at the other end. So I've realised as well I was going to probably do more of a uh, dry brush for Samus's hair. So I was just sort of painting on the hair, and then you can see here as well, I have not got the most accurate airbrush. It's more of a medium one, so uh, subsequently the eyeliner on Samus's, around Samus's eyes was less of a fine detail than on the eyelashes, and more just 
really across her entire eyes. I would have liked to have been finer, but I think... I mean, at the end you'll see how it sort of turns out a bit. So, as you can see, I think the, uh, the eyeliner's a bit on the excessive side, but not too bad in the end either. Alrighty, this one might be a bit much, but I, uh, I feel Samus can pull off metallic blue lipstick very nicely, so, uh, that's what I decided to go with. So, definitely, uh, I guess it suits well with the excessive eyeliner, I, I will say. Um, here I am just doing sort of, uh, sort of a last sort of final base coat of the, uh, hair. Making it all uniform before I start doing ebb dry brushing of uh, different hair tones. So I've got light yellow, dark yellow, sort of a, more of an orange in there as well. And I just sort of kept going over and over again, different levels of paint, uh, sort of wiping it off as I went to sort of get the darker colors further in uh, while keeping the lighter colors on top. And then to sort of finish it all off, I went by with a gold paint and dry brush that over the top over and over again to get that sort of shiny sort of hair look which I that's one of the things I'm very happy with I think uh that came out really nicely uh I didn't show it as well but I completely and utterly mucked up the head there the face I had to redo it entirely so here we are with the final product sort of the stages as I went through so face blue to begin Getting it all ready with the sort of clean base. And then sort of the final look as we uh, have a have a final glimpse at the finished model. As you can see, the glowing effect, a bit much, but uh, all in all, I am happy with how it turned out. Well, that's everything for today. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.